Welcome back to another video here on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny. Thank you so much for joining me for another video on this channel. Please don't mind Orion. He recently had surgery and he doesn't want to be alone. <laughs> so he's joining me and hopefully won't be too much of a distraction. I'm hoping he just lies down. Um, okay, so today, uh, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a couple of weeks now, all about insectoid beings um, and how unique they are and where we can find them in the galaxy and what their different traits are. Um, so it's going to be really, really super interesting and cool. But before we jump in, of course, I want to remind you that you want to subscribe to this channel for new videos every Sunday, like of course, comment your 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 thoughts and your feelings about the, the the channel as well, or sorry, about the video, as well as any video requests you might have. And then before we jump in, I want to do announcement of a brand new offer that I have for all of you beautiful online spiritual business owners. I have a new one month intensive, which I have never offered before um, because I always do like three months and up, but I'm doing a one month intensive for just three spots and it's called Ignite. And this is all about igniting the frequency blueprint of your business. This is for um, people that entrepreneurs that are looking to create fast, fast shifts, lots of momentum in their business. They're ready to grab the reins and in one month, really go deeply into the four pillars of your business. Now, what I'll do is I will leave a description. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. So just go ahead and click on that link and you can see everything that's included in that one month intensive. It's going to be definitely for a limited time because I just have a couple of spots open and I'll see how those go if I want to rerun it. So grab your spot if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in. If you've been wanting to do business uh, mentorship with me and you were looking for like an like a, a gentle way to come in, a one month is perfect, right? Okay, good. So let's jump in and talk about some insectoids now. So insectoids uh, is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a galactic being that is an insect and they are always the full aspect. Insects from like around the galaxy that are these actual higher dimensional beings with like an evolved consciousness and a spiritual side and everything, but they're all very different. But what they all have in common is for insectoids, they're always the full aspect. And what I mean by that is that they don't have a humanoid body. So sometimes you will see an avian being like, for instance, an eagle head, and maybe the feathers go back, but then it turns into like the body of a man. So that would be like a humanoid with like an animal aspect. Um, but these are the full aspect, which means it's a, it doesn't have like a human body. It's a full insect. Okay. Now, sometimes you might find that they stand like a human, a little different, or some mannerisms might be like human-esque. Um, and sometimes you might see that they're wearing clothing, but not often. Um, most of the time, and that's really for some of the more like really evolved ones, but most of the time you're just going to see, it's just an insectoid that is a lot larger than what we have here on earth. Like that's always common as well. So they're gonna be a lot larger than what we have here on earth, you know, could be size of a human, could be even bigger, could be giants compared to us, um, but they're that full insect aspect of their parts, okay? Um, and then other than that, they're all really different. Okay. So we do find insects here on earth in their lower 3d aspect. And so that means that they don't have that self-awareness animals on earth are really going from most animals on earth are going from instinct. They're living in the moment. It's a beautiful lesson about presence. But many of the insects and the animal kingdom and all of that are much more like there's they're lacking a lot of self-awareness. They're not contemplating the meaning of life. They're just in it. And there's like a real purity to that and a real beauty to that. Just living in the moment and, and living in that there's no stress. There's no it's like a lot of just joy of living. Um, but when we get these insects into higher dimensional uh planets and realms and energies it does mean that there is more of a self-awareness there they have like evolved their consciousness and sometimes spirituality as well are you serious okay so let's talk about some of the most common insectoids that you may encounter in your astral travels and your meditations as your spirit guides potentially um and i've had experiences with all of these actually, and 
yeah, and they've all been so different. So, okay, let's let's jump in. So, the these insectoids, you will find them all over our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, in planets that are environmentally conducive to their needs. Okay, so they're all going to have different needs. So the first one that I want to talk about is the mantis being. This is the most well-known, such a beautiful being. They are in, a, 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 like, when I say the dimensional energy that they're in, I want you to understand that depending on the soul, it might come in a little below or a little above, right? Because look at humans, you know, they're 3D, but some of us are moving up into four, five, six. So when I say mantis beings are 10th dimensional, that doesn't mean that some might be nine, some might be 11 in there. But on average, it's like 10th dimensional frequency. So a really beautiful high vibe, pretty close to like an Arcturian kind of energy and very high vibrational and they're mediators. Okay, so their gift or their, their special power is that they are able to stand in between two opposing sides and find a common ground. So um, they can, they make excellent politicians for the light here on earth. If you have like a really strong mantis DNA or past lives, because you can stand and you know how, you know how insane the energy and intense it can get with politics, but they can see the left side and the right side and they can be like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. I hear you, but here's a solution that works for the best, highest good for everyone involved. So that's like a really powerful mediator that can find the solution and find the way. Now the Galactic Federation of Light will use mantis beings and send them to like difficult places. They will send them to like Mars. They will send them to like Saturn. They will send them to Draco and they will be respected by those beings because um, they'll be respected by them because even those beings like the Saturn, the Mars, the Draco, they know that these are fair, like I can trust that this mantis being is going to look out for my best interests. I can trust that they are going to actually listen and hear me. So they're very respected, right? And they also have a, a calming presence. They tend to like calm the people that are around them and really bring that calm. Let's everybody just calm down. If everybody's all heightened in their energy, it's like everybody just comes down a notch. Everybody's able to slowly, carefully say their piece and know that they are listened to and all of that. So mantis beings are excellent for uh, politicians, like mediators, counselors, anybody that needs to go into like a hot energy, calm it down, find a common ground between opposing sides. Um, the next one that I want to talk about was ants. So ants are something that I encountered maybe a couple of years ago now and they are really beautiful to channel and to see if you have a spirit guide or if you just connect with an ant being and, and are and are safely channeling and, and communicating with it so they're they're around seventh dimensional again you know this is all approximate but they are extremely compassionate and that might surprise you but they have like huge huge heart energy very compassionate very, very loving. And they're so community based. And because of that, they're very supportive as well, like supportive to the needs of others. And it's definitely a team energy service to others versus like the service to self. So it's service to the whole service to the team service to the community. How can I be supportive of it all? What's best for everyone? It's a really beautiful energy. Very, very compassionate, very like empathic you know, like very clear sentient. They have these big, beautiful eyes and these little antennas and they just, I just feel like they feel everything so, so deeply and it's really beautiful energy. Okay, so the next one is the grasshopper insectoid. Little more rare, a little more rare to encounter. I think I've only had like one quick encounter. 9 to 11D and the grasshopper insectoid is very, very ancient. They're very old. And um, some of the oldest insectoids, some of the oldest beings for sure. I also see a lot of very old, not from Draco, but like a lot of very old like uh, reptiles like crocodiles and like tortoises like sometimes you meet beings that are so ancient like they've been around since the, the worlds were formed and this is like almost up there with that so grasshoppers feel very ancient very a little bit elusive very elusive and ancient very wise and they are cohabitating in their worlds 
So they don't necessarily have a planet of just grasshoppers. Whereas I have seen like mantis beings, ant beings, they would have planets where it's literally just that. And for grasshoppers, it's more about cohabitation with other worlds. Like they're a part of us of an ecosystem in, in a bunch of different worlds and realms. Um, obviously they are here on earth with us in their animal aspect or in their, in their instinctual aspect. but you can see them all the way up to like 9D, 10D, 11D. And they inhabit, one of their gifts is that they really inhabit the joy frequency, like sheer joy come radiates off of them, like a, like a quiet bliss, a joyfulness. And they are known to assist planetary evolutions, right? So even here on Earth, they could be doing it frequency-wise, um, but they are known in other um, galaxies, solar systems, that kind of thing, to, to assist that planetary evolution back into harmony. And so they have a joy frequency, and that really does help like if they're if they're spread around that that globe it can really help the ecosystems and the planet to to rise in its frequency so they're definitely known for that really beautiful and a little bit rare to to interact with the grasshopper um i think this is another really rare one so the next one is butterflies so I, I I just, the reason that I'm making this video is I recently had my very first experience with a butterfly insectoid, which was really beautiful. So these are very divine feminine. It doesn't mean that they're all females, but it means that they very much embody the divine feminine energies of like art, creativity, poetry, magic, inspiration. They are just so about self-expression in a high light. Um, they are in all dimensions, starting at 3D and up, nothing below 3D, but I have seen crystalline butterflies, so they're definitely in those higher dimensions. They, they can go all the way up, but they start, like, this is the lowest that they would go. Um, and they are, oh, this is something really beautiful about them. They, it's, it's like, we, we would not be able to hear it with our human ears, but with your clear audience, which is your mind's ear, which is sensitive to all dimensions and frequencies and signals, you could hear it, um, they sing. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, wait, they sing like in the higher dimensions or they're singing here. And they're like, no, like they sing, like butterflies sing. We might not be able to perceive of it, but it's there. They sing in a beautiful soul language. And that is why that is so beautiful because my experience was I was outside. It was a beautiful summer day recently, like this week. And I was speaking soul language in the sun. And I had this butterfly come and land right on my left eye, which is like a weird thing to have happen. And I was like, oh, and then it flew off. And then I immediately had a clairvoyant vision of an insectoid butterfly trying to get my attention and it kind of like sent its little minion to get my attention but interesting left eye is left left side of your body is your feminine side i was speaking in soul language which is what they are you know known to do and then they had this flash of this beautiful huge like as tall as as a human um butterfly that was like had very intelligent eyes and was looking at me and had all these wings and and said that it would be really good for me to do this video basically so that's where this video came from um, okay so they can go all the way up to crystalline even beyond that i think that they can be in any dimension even like an angelic dimension they love to sing they love to speak in soul language they're they're actually very family oriented like they are very family oriented. They show me like sisters and how they stuck together and, and, and looked out for each other and protected each other and tried to stay in pairs. And the family was actually a big deal for them. And then they also have one of their gifts is the frequency of the bravery and the courage to be yourself. The bravery and the courage that it takes to, to express your authentic self without filtering, without editing, just to be truly purely rawly you and that is what they do and it's beautiful and so yeah that's that would be a gift that they're bringing here to earth for sure 
And then the last one I have, ooh, it's a little spicy one, is spiders. Okay, so spiders are creator beings. They're very, very powerful creators, um, storytellers. They're very independent. They like to be lo alone, solo, uh, lone wolf. They are actually very into magic. It, it feels a little more leaning towards shadow magic than light or white magic, more of black and shadow magic than like light and white. Um, they're into rituals and they're very mystical beings and they have a long history in our galaxy with like galactic wars and spiders and takeovers and a little more service to self on this on this front than service to others. They are can be low. Like I, I have seen spiders, spider beings in the lowest realms, like dark, demonic, underworld, dark entities, those realms. I see spiders there. So they're low. And then they come all the way up past Earth to around 6D was the highest that I could feel them when I tried to tune in. And so that's where they are comfortable. Now, it's important to know that not all species are interested in full ascension back to God's source. It's just, and that's okay, right? You're always going to have some um, ex exclusions to the rule, like some spiders maybe, spider beings maybe have incarnated all the way up, but on 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 average, they're like the highest that they really go is like 60. Um, and they thrive in the lower realms because they love that ritualistic kind of storytelling, dream weaving, you know, being in service to themselves, dark kind of goddess magic. So they're happy there. Um, and it's funny because if you ever watched my video with Brian about the demonic, um, what do we, what is the video called? Like a demonic entity, like bothering us like out of nowhere we it came into the house and it was really hard to get rid of um the the interesting thing about that video is the one common thing that kept happening to brian and i was visions of spiders so you know that they can be low in their energy and i'm not saying spiders are evil for all of you that are about to be your online warriors i'm not saying that because they go all the way up to 60 i'm just saying that they are really comfortable in that shadowy energy you know, you can see it in them. You can feel it in the way they creep around. They just freaking love it. And and what I was saying is like, not all beings are interested in, in, in being something that they're not. If they're really happy in that and they're really confident in that and they're really fulfilled in that, it's okay to be that, right? And then the soul within can, spiders can stay there. And if the soul's done, it can just be something else. It can, you know, transfer to a human, a butterfly, this or that. But the spider species feels really confident in the dark. Um, this was cool, right? Like, so yeah, insectoids, you know, they really are full aspect insects. They don't have human pieces mixed in there like some other mammals and or birds do. Um, sometimes that you will see them in the really, really high dimensional. I've only really seen this with mantis beings where I've seen them wearing like a bit of a cloak, like a little bit of clothing, not, a, not like pants and everything, but like a little cloak that they had on a little bit of something. Sometimes a little bit of a mannerism can come through that might feel human ish, but mostly not. Mostly they really are the full insectoid. They only use telepathy to communicate. They're not like really speaking other than apparently butterflies sing, which is so beautiful. Um, they are found all over the galaxy in planets that are conducive to their needs. Some of them cohabitate on planets and some of them have planets just for that. You can find them in so many different dimensions. They, they extend, you know, quite a few dimensional like frequencies that can inhabit them. And many of them are, are found in like the really high dimensions as well. So I hope that this was interesting to you. Let me know what experiences you've had with these insectoids. Um, this was just some of the most common ones that you can experience and you might have run-ins with in the astral or in your meditation. So, um, and yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed this. So anyway, I want to remind you all to like and subscribe and share and all the good things. This would be a fun video to share for sure for other people to find. Also wanted to remind you that if you are looking to join a very high vibrational 
community. The Starseed Academy membership is taking new members right now. We do live events every month. There are contests to win readings with me. There are challenges, mini challenges, big challenges. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Lots of prizes going out all the time. There's a great community and a lot of um, a lot of communication happening in there. A lot of people connecting, a lot of stories, a lot of everything. So it's really awesome. So come on into the Starseed Academy membership. And alternately, if you are a beautiful online business entrepreneur and you've been wanting to work with psychic Starseed, you know, multi six figure CEO, somebody who's done it, somebody who's been there, somebody who's built it um, in a one month intensive to really create fast shifts, big momentum, work on the main pillars in your business, then check out the description for Ignite, my one month mentorship, my one month intensive, and you know, read into the details. If you have questions, you can always find me on Instagram to ask me any questions that you have. And um, if you're interested in that, jump on it because I'm only gonna take three people to start with that one. So thank you so much. And I wanna remind you as always, Listen to your heart and the quiet voice within because you are so much more than the body you are in. I love you, beautiful starseeds. Have a great day. Bye.